I don't know how many hours I sat in the poorly lit room trying to explain I wasn't a murderer. The officers tried to appear kind by offering snacks or coffee in exchange for me telling them everything. I hadn't slept for at least two days and my head started to pound. I pleaded again, my hands straining at the cuffs that kept them together. I told you again and again that I don't know the victim and I didn't know the group I met with beforehand. I saw some of their posts on a thread discussing mutual interests and they said they were locals. I said, my voice sounding as tired as I felt. A message board for people who are into ghosts, right? Listen, you had no blood on your hands, but you were picked up at the location of a mutilated dead body. If it was the others who killed him, why won't you tell us? Did they pick him out for a reason? Maybe because of his name? Stan Smith? Stan is a good name, you know? Name my son that. The detective said, then trailed off for a second before getting back on topic. With everyone we found, it looked like you guys were doing a ritual. He said, nerves also getting to him. I've been speaking with this man for hours. His partner left the room for a break and I had hoped I could get through to him in some way. He said his name was Baus. I found myself rubbing my temples trying to keep a migraine away. We were doing a ritual, one that went horribly wrong. I never should have met up with those people. I just wanted to have a fun time over the weekend. I assumed the group wanted a party, but they were all really into any kind of mystic activities. I figured to get the fun stuff, I would have to show them a fun little party trick. My head ached away. I should have called my lawyer, but he would just make this whole thing worse. You won't believe me, but what happened to that man was an accident. I started. Baus leaned in, which put me on guard. He was expecting me to finally admit to a reasonable explanation of why a man was dead when there wasn't one. We were doing a ritual. Summoning Satan and other demons is pretty easy, you know. They want to be summoned so they don't make it hard. In fact, you can find most of the materials to do so in any household cupboard. I rambled on, hoping to keep his attention. Baus leaned back on his chair, disappointed. The hard plastic chairs caused him as much pain as myself. Whoever designed this room did a good job. The cold gray walls felt as if they were closing in. The other men didn't believe what I was saying, but didn't ask for me to stop talking. He hoped I might slip up and say something useful if I went on. But it is easy to get the summoning wrong. A simple mistake in common ingredients or a slip of the tongue would be enough to... Cause accidents. I needed to stop. My mind flashed back to what happened that night. My entire body turned cold by the memory. It should have been a simple summoning. I wanted to bring forth a lesser demon that only wanted to have fun instead of taking your soul. But someone got cocky and pushed me aside trying to bring forth Satan instead. By the time I recovered, he already said the words causing our downfall and killing an innocent man. We didn't have enough power in the summoning for such a powerful request, so yeah, we got Stan instead, at least most of him. The bad coffee and chips from the vending machine turned my stomach, I needed to cover my mouth to keep it all down. I don't believe in that stuff, you know, seeing and believing and all that. Bao Sen crossing his arms over his wide chest. I wanted to be mad at him but felt too tired to do so. He looked exhausted and frustrated. I almost felt bad for him. He was stuck in a room with a person making crazy claims. I don't blame him for not believing me. Unless you're in the know with magic, it wasn't something people accepted lightly. This guy just wanted to go home to his bed and his family. I looked back at the brickwork trying to think of some way out of this. I needed a lie that would pin the blame on others but also stand up in court. Then, an idea came to me. My attention went back to Bao so quickly that he moved back in his chair slightly. If I showed you, would you believe me? I asked, voice shaking. What do you mean? He asked slowly. I needed to steady my hands. A ball of excitement started in my stomach that I pushed down. This might just work out for me after all. If... We did a ritual. If I showed you how magic works, would you believe me? I offered, pinning all my hopes on that single suggestion. He frowned, shaking his head, but I saw it. A hint of acceptance towards the idea. 
He didn't want to believe what I said was true, but he wanted to prove I was crazy by letting me fail the ritual. If it doesn't work, I'll say whatever you want me to. I'll sign any statement. I don't care. I'll just need a few things, all of which are harmless. So, what do you say? I asked, leaning forward. He didn't like the crazy look in my eye, but couldn't pass up easily closing a case. He shrugged and told me to write down what we needed. Most of the things might already be in the police station. He might need to go to a grocery store for a handful of items, but there were a few that stayed open all night. With the written list, he left me alone, saying he was going to be back shortly. I suppressed a smile. I finally had a way out. What most people don't understand is that Satan isn't really a bad guy, evil, yet reasonable. I've never personally spoken with the big guy, but I knew a person who did. In exchange for his soul, my mentor became successful in any field he worked in. He knew he would go to hell at the end of his life, but became smitten with the devil himself and almost looked forward to the idea. I could easily summon him and make a deal for my freedom. It wasn't as if I would be going to heaven anyway. Didn't save myself for marriage and a bunch of other little sins a certain other big guy would frown upon. I wondered if Baus became collateral damage. That would suck. I didn't overly dislike the guy. He was only doing his job. Bounce came back sooner than expected with the requested items in hand, along with a notepad to write down my confession. He was positive I would be making one. I wanted to tell him this wasn't going to turn out well for him, but decided against it. I looked over what he brought along, surprised by how fast he got the items. I took them from the shared kitchen. It was all there. He said, standing in the corner of the room. I pushed aside the table to make room for the circle of salt in the middle of the floor. The cuffs made the process uncomfortable, but I pushed through. Soon, I would be a free man walking out of this damn room. Bounce watched from the corner, making it clear he thought I was crazy. I stayed on my knees, saying what words I needed, careful not to make any slip-ups. With complex summoning words, it was easy to make a single deadly mistake. Aside from the tongue twisters, the rest of the setup was easy. Some salt here... Some offers there, and a drop of blood I got from biting my finger. I knew what was coming, so I stayed on the ground. The lights overhead started to darken as I spoke, causing the other man to start and doubt what he was saying. Soon, the ground under us rumbled as heat started to flood the room. I felt the sweat start on my forehead. A pole came between my chest and the circle in the ground. Something was wrong. This whole thing was off, but I couldn't figure out why that might be. I used the right materials and said the right words. What could be wrong? I refused to stop, finishing up what I needed to say and waited with a held breath. The rumbling stopped and the lights came back on and nothing else happened for a second making me think I failed. When what I summoned appeared in the middle of the circle, I knew I failed, but in a way, I never wanted to see it again. A body appeared a few inches above the circle and dropped down hard on the cement floor. I gasped, head dizzy at the sight and smell of what was in front of us. Unlike the poor Stan, whom we killed through our careless actions, this body looked far too small. At first, I prayed it was an animal. After I saw a bloody leg wearing a footy pajama sticking out from the twisted gore, I knew what happened. I wanted to be sick. My mind internally screamed at the horror of what I had just done. I killed a child, but this should not have happened. I collapsed, my face breaking the circle. In the middle of my panic and dread, I tasted something sweet. The realization of how this mistake happened caused me to sit up. I stared at the box I poured the salt from. The blank box. One that could have easily held sugar if no one thought to check what someone repacked inside of it. My head slowly turned, my eyes landing on the other man in the room. His eyes were so wide I thought they might pop out. A weight came down in my stomach when another realization came. Baus recognized a detail about this body. It took every ounce of power to ask a very simple question. What did you say your son's name was? I said, voice very weak. Baus looked down in my direction slowly, his mouth open for a scream that never came. In fact, he never made another sound again. The sight was enough to make his mind snap. I faintly thought I heard a deep, dark laugh. It might have been my imagination, but I would like to think the big guy saw this as hilarious. 
Regardless of making a deal with him, I was always destined to spend the rest of eternity under his thumb. And honestly, I deserved it.